Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan and welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me, I'm a Blacksmith. Let's talk about why I think gas forges suck. Okay, so the truth is, I don't actually think gas forges suck. In fact, I think gas forges have their place in the modern workshop, along with solid fuels and induction. So why the clickbaity title, Dan? Well, basically, uh, this video is going to be based around a video that I saw recently, which has a similar title. Um, and uh, has a very biased opinion and says some stupid things in it that I think that need clearing up basically. Um, so the actual title of this video should be Gas versus Solid Fuels. Now it's quite easy for me to sit in my workshop and have a good old chat with you but I thought it would be a good idea to take the video outside like the video that I'm uh, referring to and uh, first of all I would like to clear up some points that happened in that video. So let's go for a walk. So the video in question opens talking about the nature of man and uh, their desire to make themselves useless which I think is utterly well, it's a stupid opening comment, but basically it's to suggest that this, this striving is to lead towards technological advances, and thereby strengthening his argument that industry uses gas as a, um, as a medium to get material hot for reforging, and therefore if the professionals do it, he should. So I did some research thinking that um, I didn't believe this very much, and um, I found some information about the types of fuels used in the steel industry, uh, both on uh, production and the reforging side of um, industry. And my results were that in fact solid fuels, i.e. coal or coke, is used most commonly in the steel manufacturing industry, both on the production and reforging side. And then liquid fuels, such as diesel, oil tar and coal oil were second with electrical furnaces, arc furnaces and inductions third, and finally natural gases were used in the reheat processes, or gases that were byproducts of solid fuels. So the industry relied really heavily on solid fuels in order to produce heats and temperatures that are required in order to reforge solid large numbers of material. The medium that this particular YouTuber refers to, LPG, is only used in cutting processes in industry. In fact, nine times out of 10, LPG isn't used, and acetylene is. But with the industry trying to move away from acetylene, propane is becoming more popular. The YouTuber in question then goes on to say, in 95% of all situations, gas is the best option. Again, I don't know where this information comes from, because it depends on your situation, your location, cost, and application. So let's have a look at these four situations that occur um, which may decide whether or not gas or coal is your best option. The first one is location. I've heard of lots of stories of people who live in Australia, one of the largest coal in producing countries in the world, where they just can't get hold of coke. And then in other countries, gas is really, really expensive. So depending on your location in the world, it depends on how easy it is to get hold of the fuel you want to use. So, if you can't get hold of coal, then gas is definitely a better option. So your circumstances or situations can definitely affect the type of fuel you're going to use. Say you live in your mum's house and you've been given a bit of space in a garage to build a forge, well you definitely can't go cutting a hole in her roof, and um, that means you can't have a flu, which means you definitely can't use coke. It's also really important to understand that cost plays a massive part in whether or not you're going to use gas or coal. The day-to-day -day running of a gas forge is extremely expensive. Gas is expensive and then the general maintenance of that, the equipment is very expensive. Whereas with coke, once you have your forge, as long as you look after your equipment well, it'll last a very long time. And finally, application. It's really important to understand the type of work that you want to do with your forge. If you're interested in making knives, then gas is probably the best way to go. But if you want to make ornate scroll work and build brackets for hanging flower pots off, well, you probably need a coke forge. So to finish this video off, I'm going to head back up to the workshop and talk about the pros and cons of gas and solid fuels. Um, hopefully giving you guys a little bit of an insight as to what each one provides and the, the basis on which one you can work out which one you then probably will be better off running in your workshop. But like I said in the beginning of this video, I don't think one's better than the other. They each have their own specialties and their applications. This is my gas forge. I built it about three years ago uh, when I first started up in this workshop. Um, it's mostly 
uh, found items or borrowed items. Um, these uh, gas burners, these were given to me uh, by a friend that came out of the salt kiln. Uh, the steel is all from scrapyard and these pipes are bought. So I have made these up because this runs off compressed air as well as gas, so it's forced induction. Um, and basically it cost me a couple of hundred pounds to make it, um, but in, in the time I've had it, I've had to replace this thermal ceramic insulation uh, uh, several times, uh, which is quite costly. So what I'd like to do now is talk about the pros and cons of using gas. Now one of the main things that um, stands gas out from, from solid fuels is it can be very compact. It can take up very little room indeed, especially if you don't do much forging. This unit here can consist of one burner, it can be about a foot long by about a foot wide, it can stand on a table with a small gas cylinder underneath, which is extremely compact. Um, it means you can use it in your garage, also it doesn't need a flue, um, which is another good reason why you might use gas, especially if you can't cut a hole in the roof of the building you're working in for whatever reason. So it gives you the ability um, to use the space you have really, really well. These forges are ideal for beginners or people who are very busy in the workshop or people who are teaching. You can put a product in here, you can put a number of products in here, you can go away and do something else and then come back and do your forging. Uh, if you're teaching, for example, people can have work in the fire, they can go away, they can talk to you as a tutor, they can come back and their work still in the fire. With coke or solid fuels, they tend to burn. Uh, and that can be very frustrating, especially for beginners. You put all that time in at the anvil and your work's gone. Gas forges work really well for fire welding, high carbon, high nickel content steels together. They also work brilliantly for doing batch work with um, if you don't have someone else in the workshop. Now onto the cons. Unfortunately, I feel gas has a lot of downsides to it that prevent you from developing yourself as a blacksmith. Um, which I think if you are trying to be a genuine blacksmith, not a bladesmith or pattern welding, uh, very high carbon, high nickel content steels together, um, these things really do hold you back. Now firstly, one of the biggest problems with gas forges is safety. You need to be checking these systems over daily when you're using them for leaks. Uh, if you're not, you're putting yourself at risk, especially if you go, forget to turn a cylinder off at night, you go to bed, you come in in the morning, you light up the forge or you light up a cigarette or you start grinding, boom you're a goner. Um, that is a real big issue with gas. Um, yes, I know it smells, um, but you have to be really, you know, you have to be studious with your safety when it comes to gas. And it lets it down. For, for, for its flexibility, it really does let it down. Cost! They're really expensive to run. Uh, I think it's a bit of a misnomer that they're cheap. They're not. Um, I use a, the larger cylinders, the 74 kilo cylinders, um, and they cost me about £45. If you wanted to buy one, most, most people spend between £60 and £70 pounds for a cylinder. That's a lot of money. Uh, and um, if you're using, a, I use a single burner with forced induction. It's a bit thirsty, I know, but I use about half a cylinder in a six to eight hour shift. Um, that means I'm using about 20, if you're talking about the more expensive prices, maybe 35 pounds of gas a day. And that's very expensive. Um, you know, also, Replacing this medium isn't cheap. This costs me nearly a hundred pounds a time to change this medium. It's very expensive. These and they need changing a lot, especially if you're doing a lot of hard, heavy work with them. Um, you know, um, again, you you will see YouTubers who have recently replaced this. I need to replace this again. This is the third time, so you know, it's uh, it's 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 a difficult challenge to keep on top of maintenance. Also, burners burn out real quick. You have to keep them looking good and tidy as well. Another problem with these gas forges is they're slow. Uh, and they work at very low temperatures. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but if you are wanting to do fire welding on um, high, uh, low carbon steels or raw irons, these aren't really the kiddies for you. Uh, also, um, they take a long time to get hot. The initial start up is very quick. You just chuck a flame in there and you're going. But to get these hot working properly, you know, they can take anywhere up to an hour to get warm. So say you've just made your nice scrolly bracket and you go to try and put it back in here. It ain't going in. And unfortunately, that's one of the biggest issues with gas. This orifice size determines the size of work you, are, you will be able to make and how you get that piece of work hot. Now, you can get larger forges but they're more expensive to run. They don't run as hot, you know, and they are, again, they have very specific purposes. This gas forge will not take scroll work. This gas forge will not take those large hammers that I make. This gas forge, you know, it has one job. It works really well at doing that one job. It does occasionally do a little, other little jobs, but it's not, it's not great. It's not great for big work.
Um, I, I think I've said this already before, but the, this, these fires are these forges are not good for fire welding. Your high carbon, high nickel content fire um, forge welds with your patterns and all that, yeah, great. The second you start putting mild steel in here and trying to get them to go together, your temperatures are through the roof. They wreck your, wreck your refractory. You know, you need to, you really, really do need to um, use a coke forge if you want to do those higher temperature welds. Also, large welds and um, very complicated small welds like stem welds and stuff like that, these are no good for doing that sort of work with either. They're just not enough concentrated heat in the area that you want to weld. And that brings me on to my last point, fire control. There's no fire control with these. You put the bit in, you want to get hot, you pull it out, it's hot. In, in certain applications you don't want that and that is very limiting and this is one of the reasons, another reason why I think gas, gas forges will hold you back as a maker. So this is my uh, Coke Forge. I bought this from a guy called Mike Judd. Um, I bought it about six years ago. It cost me about £500. I've had no problems with it whatsoever. Um, it works really well. I really enjoy using it. Uh, I have used these blocks here just because I like a little bit of a higher bed on my fire. Uh, that was my one complaint. I would like this tray to be slightly higher. But that's my personal opinion. Um, and when I've got long work to go in here, I tend to take this out anyway and change the way that I use the fire. Solid fuel pros. Firstly, coal is cheap. They're very cheap to buy, especially second hand. They're even cheaper to make. Um, and um, they last you a long time. It's very time. flexible, it's cheap, you know, and it, it doesn't need any maintenance. Now the fuel I'm using in it is coke. I have tried um, uh, breeze before um, and I didn't get on with it very well but that you know that's my opinion a lot of guys like using coke I find it very uh, a lot of guys like using coals I find coals very sticky uh, they tend to give you an odd clinker as well um, but that's not a problem I mean it's, it's, that's my preference now I use about a bag sorry about three quarters of a bag to a bag and a half a day depends on what I'm making uh, and in that time period of about six to eight hours uh, that cost me somewhere between 10 and 16 pounds a day. So yes, as cost goes, they're really cheap to run um, and they are really cheap to buy and keep maintaining if you spread that cost over a period, so uh, six years. So one of the aspects of coal uh, or coke or solid fuels or charcoals that outstrip gas by a, like a proper mile is that they are very flexible, they are very versatile. Um, they give you the ability to control where you have your heat, what kind of heat you have and how long that heat is in the bar, how you got that heat there. So um, th just being able to control that element uh, over gas is one thing that will really help you on as a blacksmith. It will take you to the next level. Um, and I'm not just saying that, these, these fires are brilliant absolutely brilliant at giving you the types of heat and in the places that you need. They're also great at taking varied and different sized pieces of stock. Both this little tiny Patreon key ring and this anchor were made in this fire. Um, I could not make that in, I could not make this in that gas forge. There's no way I could. I couldn't even get the starting stock in there. Now if you've got small gas forges at home, you know, you could pay about £500 for your gas forge or £500 for this old girl and uh, you know, you can make things like this or things like this and knives and do all your fire welding. And this brings me on to the type of fire welds you can do. You can do your small ornate leaf work fire welds, you can do your large fire welds like a fire weld with a rivet on the end here, you can do uh, you can do raw iron work in here which you need to work at fire welding temperature, you can fire weld mild steels in here, you can do all sorts of things in this type of fire that you cannot do in gas, or not very easily in gas at least anyway. And if you start learning how to fire weld mild steel in this sort of fire, fire welding everything else is contrary to popular belief and I'm probably going to get some stick about this one because I think a few people might disagree with me, it's really easy to light these things. Now, I like sometimes off gas, and I bring my gas bottle over, I stick my gas torch in here and I get a lit, I'm working in about 10 minutes. And that's not an understatement, I am literally working at this fire 10 minutes after lighting it. But if you do it with wood and paper or fire lighters, you can get these things lit in hardly any time, and they are ready to work within minutes. Um, once this temperature here gets to hot enough, you can start working in that fire within about 20 minutes of lighting it. That's including all your prep work and setting up. Old boys who are really good at lighting these fires can probably light them even quicker. These aren't necessarily plug and play like gas is referred to, but they do suck, they do 100% light faster and you can work with them quicker than you can with gas forges. Cons. 
This stuff gives off carbon monoxide, and carbon monoxide is poisonous. That's why I have a flu and a very well ventilated workshop. They also give off dust, and this dust has got up here all by itself. It's been lifted up here by the airflow. So they're dirty, they give out disgusting fumes, they also make put this dust into the atmosphere and um, look, they're absolutely filthy. They also need a big old hole driven in the roof. If you include the flu, these take up quite a lot of room. Uh, the base for this uh, fire, for example, takes up uh, quite a bit more room than the small gas forge would. Uh, then there's the storing of the coke and then also the flu. Now, if I was running a workshop just off gas, I would probably be running in between five and six cylinders in the workshop and rotating those round. So, you know, you're taking up quite a bit of room with gas cylinders and they are heavy, but also bags of coke, I would suggest take up the same amount of room. Uh, but you don't need to put a hole in your roof, especially not for the gas. The other thing on the, uh, on the room side is, I can't move this around my workshop. I can't have this set up in one area and then go, oh, I need to move that today so I can do another job. This prevents me from moving around workshop because of the flu. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had loads of fun making it and I hope I haven't ruffled too many feathers. Um, good luck guessing where I copied the general idea of this video from. Uh, there's loads of little clues in the video for you to work out where I got my ideas from. Um, to be nice if you do find out. And um, ju I'd just like to say again, I reiterate again, because this doesn't seem to go through sometimes. I don't have a preference. I was brought up on coke, it's the one I use. I use gas, and if I had induction, I'd probably use induction. I would also like a diesel converter, heat converter. I don't have those things, I've never tried them. Well, I have tried the diesel, I've never tried the induction, I'd love to. I'm gonna make a statement now about gas versus coal. If you're using gas, that's amazing. If you can change to coal, I would. The reason for this, gas is very limiting. If, if you just wanna make knives, great, go gas. If you want to better yourself as a smith, you want to start making your night metal work, you want to start entering competitions, or whatever you want to do as a blacksmith, swap over to coke. Genuinely swap over to coke. It will massively improve your abilities. I am really, my fireside skills are poor. Um, you'll see that if you see the Welsh video. I, I really, really struggle with fire because it's hard. It takes a lot of practice. You really need to learn it. And you are boys out there who use coke, you will agree with me on this. I'm 100% sure. You get your fire management right, the anvil stuff is easy peasy. Once you're getting that heat in the right place and you know what you're doing, the anvil stuff is easy. So thank you for joining me guys. If you like this video, please leave a like or a dislike if you didn't like this video. I know it's a controversial subject. Remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and ring that bell for notifications if you are a subscriber. And also chuck comments down below. I love hearing from you guys all the time. Um, and it, it shows that you guys really do enjoy talking to me as well because I've got a few of you guys who are constantly commenting and constantly, constantly talking and I love it. We've got a little community growing um, and I want it to go that way for a long time. I will chuck a video up here for me talking about how to become a professional blacksmith and then I will chuck a random video down here for you guys to enjoy as well. So thank you very much for joining me. I will see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye bye.